Okay, so everyone's been asking about it, so I finally got around to doing a tutorial on wiper motor wiring. But first, a disclaimer. Warning, the wiring shown here is typical of the motors I've used. However, the number and colors of the wires may vary from what you have. You've been warned. Okay, first things first. Let's take a look at the wiring itself. A typical wiper motor has four wires coming out of it. There's actually a fifth wire, ground, but that's the actual body of the motor itself. Because in most automotive applications, the chassis of the vehicle is your ground. So keep that in mind. I usually attach a separate ground wire to the body of the motor, just so it's easier to wire up. But let's take a look at what happens with the different wires. If we apply power directly to the red wire, the motor will start spinning, slowly. This is the slow speed setting, and as long as power is applied, the motor keeps turning. When you remove power, the motor stops in whatever position it happened to be in. Now, if we apply power to the brown wire, the motor starts spinning, but faster. This is the high speed setting for the motor. Now, the other two wires, blue and green, are typically used for the park feature. This is dealt with by an internal switch inside the motor that you can't see, and it's wired up to look something like this. This internal switch is controlled by the rotation of the motor itself. If we slowly start the motor rotating, you'll see that at some point early in the rotation, the internal switch flips to the other setting, and remains that way for the entire duration of the rotation of the motor. However, it does flip back once the motor returns to its home or park position. Okay, so what does that do for us? Well, by itself, nothing. However, if we wire things up like this, now we can have some fun. If we flip this upper switch into its upper position, power is directed straight into the red wire and the motor starts to rotate as we'd expect. During part of the rotation, the internal switch flips over. However, we're still applying power to the red wire, so things keep rotating. But if we now flip that upper switch back down to its lower position, the power now continues in through the blue wire, through the internal switch, out the green wire, and back in the red wire, and the motor keeps rotating. This is fine until the motor gets back to its home or park position. Now the internal switch flips back to the other way, removing power and also shorting the motor out to ground. This acts as a sort of electronic brake and brings the motor to a screeching halt almost instantly. This is perfect for most applications. Now we can cycle that upper switch on and off very quickly and each time we do the motor will complete a single rotation and then stop automatically. No other circuitry is required. The applications are endless. If we substitute a relay for that upper switch instead, now we can have another circuit control this. In some of my applications I use a 555 timer circuit that triggers the relay every so often and keeps it closed for about a half second, giving the motor enough time to get started in its cycle. After that, the uh, relay can drop out, the motor will continue, and whatever scare we've got attached to it will complete its cycle all on its own. And there you have it, a very quick uh, wiper motor wiring tutorial. Hope you found this useful and interesting. If you've got any questions about it, drop me an email at creepycreations at telus.net.